Dear Heavenly Father, I want to say God bless my father, Robert Charles Andrew Simmons Sr. Okay? God bless his soul. God bless his spirit. So I start with the Our Father. It's about heads. On my pop's jacket right here, you know, it's with me in spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespassers as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the honesty, kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord, I always love you. God bless my father, my daddy, for life. <sighs> Where can I start, yo? My father, my father, Robert Charles Andrew Simmons, he's the greatest man ever, yo. He's the greatest man on this earth, yo. He gave me so much knowledge from the time I was a little youth, little boy, even me as a grown man, you know? Never doubt with daddy. Never doubt daddy. And one thing, he always had good intuition. You know what I'm saying? Always had good intuition and never steered me wrong and always gave me a warm love and hug. You know? Um, I remember when I was like, I, I was probably like two years old in Warwick. How can I remember this? Because it was a good memory. Um, I used to, I used to blow on my dad's stomach, like <coughs> doing things like that, you know, this big old hairy belly. <laughs> um, Miss my pops, man. Um, he taught me everything. Carpentry, how to swim. Growing up in Bermuda, it, it was beautiful, you know what I'm saying? He used to take me around the rocks, um, around the back of Clearwater Beach, around the back of Clearwater Beach, took us and the family on some like some barbecues and things like that like we'll be barbecuing and it was nice like you know what i'm saying burgers meat and he was always creating things always created things and that's that's one thing i could say about my pops he's a master chef master chef master carpenter all of that, master builder, like, everything. I remember it was a parent-teacher race. I think it was, I think I was going to Victor Scott at the time, was it, Vic, it was either Victor Scott or Delwood, I'm not sure. But it was parent-teacher race. And my dad had those dreads, it had some very long locks. You know what I'm saying? Some super long locks. And he would be running so fast, like Sonic. <laughs> be running. And he won that race. Big guy, but he could move, he could float, man could float. Strong. Strongest man I ever I ever met. Lifting everything. 
out here in Greenwood, you know, taught me how to chop wood and stuff. I could split a split a tree log with one swipe. My little brother Rob could tell you we was out here chopping trees and stuff. It's nice. Every birthday, he would always be cooking, showing love. Always gave me gifts. Pops always came through with everything. If ever I needed anything, he was always there. I remember he had the longest dreads ever when he was when he would go swimming. And me and my brother and my sister, well, I think it was just me and Kobe. We would be hanging on his dreads hanging on his locks because we were scared. Like, you know, I was like, it's okay, Jay, it's okay. Come on, son, you can do it. Swim, 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 swim back to me, swim back to me. Hey, man. Here's the guy. When we used to uh, go on construction jobs and stuff like that, he always taught me how to, he taught me how to paint, how to do our missionary work, like, you know, flawless. My pops, like, he painted this. We, we painted our house. We'll be here painting, you know, painting all of this. We did our kitchen, you know. My pops, we did this, did this, flawless, flawless. You know what I'm saying? Even my dad, my brother, did all of this. And, uh, and Paget, Paget. Uh, he taught me about he taught me about like the different fruits and stuff, the loquats in Bermuda. Um, avocados taught me how to cook them, and how which ones was ripe. You get this big avocados, like the big avocados. Salt them up, you know. And he loved pancakes, man. He used to be making the biggest pancakes on the planet. I swear. I'm like, how, like, and I'm like, how can you eat this? But you can eat it, you know? Flapjacks, he would make pancakes big as the whole frying pan. You know what I'm saying? And always he taught me, he taught us how to love animals and, you know, taught us how to train our dogs. Yeah. Always taught us to never be fearless. Don't be scared. Don't be scared of anything. But whenever I was scared, I'd call my pops and he would be there. He would be there. Any time, any day, any place. Pops had my back, regardless of anything. Always. I love my pops. I love you, Dad. I don't know what to do without you. I wish you were here. I was gunning, like, you know, and at any time I get a job, he'd be like, I'm proud of you, son. I'm proud of you. Yes. And whenever, and whenever I was doing something good, he was happy. Happy to see me happy, you know? And whenever something wasn't right for me, say, hey, get away from that. Run far away from that. Mrs. Laugh. His handshakes, man. His hugs. Everybody knew my pops. Wherever he went, everybody knows him. And everybody knew me because of my pops. You know? It was amazing. 
how he knew everything. He loved his ball fades and it would give me haircuts and I would be looking clean too, you know? I had him ball fades. And I used to always want to be like my pop. Like, you know, smell good like my pop. He always had the best cologne. I was always getting into his cologne and stuff. Even if I take a little spritz, like I'll be like, Ch -ch -ch -ch, go to school. <laughs> And I'll be dressing up in button-ups because, you know, my, my dad, he always had button-ups. Like, you know, he was clean. Whenever he, whenever he wanted to press and look and look clean, hey, he would do it. You know what I'm saying? Always wearing some good gear, you know? Even this, this leather bomber jacket pops. OG, triple OG, man. And he loved his Pittsburgh Steelers. He loved his Pittsburgh Steelers. Every Sunday, he'd be watching the game. Every Sunday. He ain't missed not one game. Loved his Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, that was his team. The Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, he loved pineapple sherbet. Pineapple sherbet. He used to always tell me about shepherd's pie. And he makes shepherd's pie. And I, anytime my pop cooked, it was magical, man. You know? Everything. Curry rice and fish. <sighs> Lemon pepper fish. And tilapia. Snapper. And then we used to be fishing, right? Always tell me about the snapper, like, you know, the snapper's the best fish. And then we used to go fishing off the rocks behind, back behind um, Clearwater Beach. Some other spots in Bermuda, like, uh, what's that dock? Um, Black, I think it's Black Horse Tavern Dock. We went fishing there and I had got we was like fishing and I was swimming and I ended up jumping off the dock and everything and I ended up cutting my finger. Uh, got injured, but you know, I came out the water, got stitched up. Um, one thing and then, you know, when I used to get in trouble in school, Pops used to say, like if I got in a fight or something, did you win? Did you beat him? <laughs> it's like, you know, we don't lose. Uh, um, and, and, um, you know, I remember this trip that we were going down to Atlanta, you know, and, uh, there was another family member that, that went up above, you know, and I was driving the Escalade. And my, on the on the trip down there, my dad was always saying, "Yo, we gotta stop at Bojangles. We gotta stop at Bojangles. We stopped at Bojangles, got that chicken, and hey, it was nice, you know. And but I, but check it. So we driving on the highway, and we were switching turns and stuff like that. But anyway, I was driving and. I was like, Pops, he was in the driver's seat, he was in the passenger seat. I was in the driver's seat, I was like, Pops, is that a is that a cop? I don't know. He said, I think daddy said that, uh, he said, I don't know, it looks like a state boy. And he was like, watch your speed, watch your speed. But the, on the highway, like, you know, we were speeding and then, um, you know, I decided to go. And then next thing I know, woo, cops pulled us over. Daddy had my back. He was like, yo, be easy, be easy, calm down, because he's like, these these, these white cops. He's like, yo, you can't trust these rednecks. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but, hell, we made it up out of there, you know? 
Uh, every house that we had, he would always get these coconut incense, and, you know, and got these things made. I think they came from Jamaica or somewhere. I'm not really too sure. I don't remember. Um, man, I miss my dad cologne. He used to have the, Cube, the Cuban cigar colognes. Smelled good, man, all the time. Daddy was fresh, fresh all the time. I don't know what to say, man. There's so much I could say about my pops. I love him and I miss him. I'm going to miss him, me coming home to Jersey and me seeing him in the backyard doing something, cooking, cleaning up the yard. We laid our yard down, grass, one thing, man. He was a social butterfly. And like I said, he knew everybody. He introduced me to everybody. And um, taught me about dogs, how to breed them, you know, uh, different kinds of fish. He knew all the names, names and names that I didn't even know. Taught me about the koi fish. One time, like, you know, he was doing a house job and he must have saw these koi fish and we was going to go get them. And uh, we went there and we was trying to fish through the, the pool, trying to find them and we couldn't find them. But, you know, um, yeah. Oh, my gosh, Pops. I love you, Dad. I love you so much, yo. I miss you. I know that you're here and I feel your presence and you keep me grounded. And when the sun shines, I see you. When I look in the garage, I see you, I feel you. I love you, Pops. I know you're here. And I know you're watching over the dogs, too. <laughs> yeah, you pulled a fast one on me this morning. Like what you said, like, hey, if, if the dogs don't be out by 9 a.m., they're going to use the bathroom. And it was amazing what you did just this morning. Don't know how or when you did it, but you did it. <laughs> You're magical. You're a magic man. I miss you and I love you. And I'm gonna get that CDL. And we're gonna get that bus. We're gonna get your bus. I'm gonna get that. Every breath and bone in my body, I'm gonna get that. I love you, Pops. Forever. Always. I am a Simmons. I love you. King raised by a king. You told me that. I'm Jacobia. Robert Simmons' second oldest daughter, a child. Um, I just want to say a few things about my dad. My dad was the best dad in the world. Um, he taught us how to be kind to animals, how to train animals. Um, he taught us how to fish and how to bait a rod or bait a hook even though I only caught a small one, but he still taught us how to fish. Um, my dad loved being in the water and on the water. He actually taught us how to swim and jump from, from 
pink wall and from peak and just jump off the rocks and, and be thrill seekers. Um, my dad taught us how to cook and that's whether or not we wanted to stay in the kitchen long enough to learn. Um, my dad, he was so amazing. He taught me how to be a leader and not a follower and to never give up. He taught me to never say that I can't do something. Always say that I can. Um, so I'm trying to be strong while I'm doing this video. Um, my dad taught me how to fillet a fish, even though I would never do that. <laughs> but he taught me how. So if I need to survive and I have to fillet a fish to eat it, then I can do that. Um, but now I just buy fillet fish. Um, my dad taught me how to be kind to others, never judge a book by its cover because someone always has their own story. Um, my dad taught me how to fly a kite. Um, that's one of the things you do in Bermuda. Um, he taught me how to find seashells and to, he just taught me a bunch of different things about the water. Like what happens when you get stung by a jellyfish or the dangers of the water, um, how Bermuda is protected by reefs. Um, he just taught me a lot of things to not be scared. Um, and to just go out and do it. Um, my dad loved his grandchildren. He loved all his children. Um, my dad was just the best. And this is really hard. I'm, I'm trying to be strong for my dad. Because I know he, he would tell me to let it out, but I'm trying to be strong. <sighs> um, I just wish I could call him to ask him for advice. <sighs> I wish I could call him and hear his jokes because my dad was a funny guy. Um, <sighs> I just... I know I can still talk to him and he won't respond, but I know he will hear me. <laughs> um, I just miss him so much. <sighs> My dad can drive any car, any bike. He taught us how to ride bikes. He can drive stick shift. He can drive automatic. He, he can drive a, a truck. He can drive a van. <laughs> And he can park it. <laughs> um, and he did all that <laughs> in the U.S. without a license. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> but um, he was just amazing all around. And my dad can really cook. I always asked him, Dad, you should be a chef. And he actually got a job as a chef um, for a little while, but... His knees were really bad. Um, I remember one time in school, I went to Cedar Bridge and we had bring your parent to school day um, to show off their occupation. And I was like, my dad built this school. He built Cedar Bridge. I was so proud and so happy. Um, and I remember one time I got an allergic reaction to something I ate in school. He picked me up and he was like, damn, you look like a toad. <laughs> but it made me laugh. Um, my dad wasn't too big on going to hospitals. So one time I had an allergic reaction 
and we stopped off at a grocery store to try to get Benadryl. He realized that wasn't working. So he took me to the hospital and I remember I passed out. <laughs> and he, I just remember going in and out of consciousness and him um, picking me up, running me to the hospital, saying, help my daughter. <laughs> I just wish I could have been there to help him. <sighs> um, just so much more I can say, but I love you so much, Dad. And I know you're up there with Nana and Uncle Lou and Aunt Frances. Probably up there cooking, because all y'all could cook. <laughs> Having a great meal up there. Wish you could send some down. Um, but I love you. Rest in peace, Dad. From your daughter, Jacobia. Rob forever will be in my heart. That's my sunshine. That's my beautiful husband. And he's always going to be beautiful. He, he is the glue. He is the glue. He is the one that says, you know what? This is what we about to do for our family. And we, and we always came back with each other and we did whatever happened. He said, happened, happened. So I will forever remember our good times. I will forever remember the long hikes, the nature walks, him teaching me how to cook. When we met, he said, you know what? How about you stick to, stick to cleaning and I stick to cooking? Cause you're good at that and I'm, I'm good at, at cooking. I said, you know what? I agree with you. I ain't even gonna argue with you. So my day was Sunday. He loved to cook. He was a chef. He did so, his cooking was so good. I remember when I played on Dr. Oz one time and I told him, I said, my husband is a chef. My husband, Rob, he taught me, da -da 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 -da, you know, and I was just bigging him up on TV. Like he's, he was amazing. His food was, was amazing. So there's so much I can go on, but I know my time is limited. And I just want y'all to know that Rob will want us to be happy, be thoughtful, be pleasant to each other. You know, do good deeds, love on each other. Thank you.